That $1,700 took us to sell the company for a billion dollars. I was a waiter, guys. I failed at the third grade. I didn't hit a lotto ticket. Can you imagine if you give yourself focus? That's all it is, man. People think cash is trash. I disagree. What advice would you give to somebody that wants that life? There's four pillars that really helped Bobby and I. One is PMA all day, every day, non-refundable minutes. Number three was stack and rack. And number four was- This is probably the most important thing you're gonna hear on this podcast. We created a company from $1,700 that wasn't even our money, and we sold it for $1 billion on our terms. And along the way, before we sold the company, we created a $750 million real estate portfolio that gives us each, every month, $500,000, whether we like it or not. So can you, man. You can do this, but you have to dial into this. We want to share from our heart to you. Yeah, so if we were able to do it, you can too. You just have to put in your work. PMA. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Passionate Few Podcast. Today, you guys are in for a special episode as we have a round two with none other than Bobby and Sophia Castro in their beautiful home here in Fort Lauderdale. Let's talk about all things mindset, success, real estate, and also some of the practical pieces of wisdom that you guys can apply to your life to take your investments and your whole life to the next level. So thanks so much for being on the show today. Thank, Thank you, I'm too. Marla. Good to see you again. Thank you. Yeah. Again, You're what, three good. years? Yes, it's been about, yeah, two years, probably two years and some change since COVID. Um, and I know last time we talked a little bit about, you know, your guys' success in real estate. At the time, your guys' portfolio was just north of $300 million. And every time we check your Instagram, there's always a, a whole bunch more real estate being added. But I want to talk first a little bit about your guys' exit, right? Uh, post leaving the company at a billion-dollar valuation. Yeah. So when you guys were done completely out and had probably more liquid than you guys have ever had before, what was that feeling like for you guys? You know, for me, you know, uh, the last slice, number three, uh, the fireworks did not go off. Matter of fact, the slice before that one, the fireworks didn't go off. And then the very first slice, the fireworks didn't go off. Um, I expected it, dude. I, I just couldn't wait to ring that bell. I couldn't <laughs> wait to feel that whatever it is. Um, I was so disappointed. And that's not bad news. Actually, to me, that was awesome news because that that, that told me you, you, you're you shedding in the correct way, Bobby. It's mm -hmm. not all about the money. The money, I found out, when you have so much passion and so much focus and you give it so much energy, your life, it just simply grows. That just comes with it. But the fireworks didn't go off. My wife, on the very first slice, and I'll let her explain that, not the other two slices, especially the big final slice when we sold it for a billion. Uh, the first, first slice, she was very emotional. Mm. Yeah, it was, um, for me, it was, something imagine we come from absolutely zero dollars none of our family members neither one of ours had ever exited a business or even owned a business correct so well not they had owned the businesses but never had exit or uh, accomplished what we were accomplished and we had when we bobby and i started this business it wasn't about we're going to exit a business or we're going to become millionaires or billionaires none of that for us it was just how are we going to be able to survive and be our own bosses we just bobby when I first met him, just told me, I don't want to work for nobody. I want to work for myself. Yeah. So my mindset was just, okay, let's just have something like a business that we could pay, you know, our bills. That's it. That was all. So that first slice for me was such an emotional roller coaster because I was so extremely like proud of us mm -hmm. and that I couldn't believe that we reached that level of success. Right. For me, that was huge. So I was she broke very, down. she broke I down. Completely was crying. I would cry. You remember the day when that big wire came through? Definitely. Well, what was it like? What was it like the moment? I just couldn't believe the, the numbers in the bank account. <laughs> I was like, I, I mean, I literally just kept, I would continue to cry. And I was crying of happiness. I wasn't crying. It was so, I was just so proud of us that we were able to do something. Remember, Bobby nor I graduated from high school nor went to university or anything. So, how old were you guys when you guys met? 18 and 22. Wow. Yeah. So I only got through the ninth grade, as you know, and my awesome life partner here of Sophie, uh, she only got through the 10th grade. And by the way, Omar, we just celebrated October 6th, 32 years of marriage wow. together, 33. 
Thank you. I love it. Thank you. What, what did you guys learn from that? Or what advice would you guys give to people about what it takes to have a healthy relationship? You know, we were speaking at an awesome event in Cabo and it was all about couples and that they're in business together. They're investors, they're entrepreneurs. You have to be willing to be vulnerable and surrender to the fact that I'm going to at least share with you what worked for us. I can't really give the sure. testimony on anybody else. There's a lot of people that um, have success in their relationships. Continue falling in love every day. Mm -hmm. You don't fall in love one time. You constantly have to find ways to continue finding this appreciation, this man, Sophie, and I, I'm constantly looking to fall in love. I'm, I'm just, my wife is 51, dude, I'm 55. I think she's the sexiest chick on the planet. She turns me on so much. I love everything about her. Just when I thought I know her, wow. And talk about focusing and giving energy to something. Right. It only one thing guarantees to happen. It grows. Focus on your relationship and it'll grow, man. You keep falling in love. I have three pillars that I always tell couples. And, and by the way, I almost screwed it up a few times. That sounds oh. all great. Um, I used to be a taker back in the day, many years ago. Now I'm a giver. I almost screwed up my marriage uh, a few times mm -hmm. in awful ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I always tell three, I have three pillars that I live by, and I always tell couples that when they ask us, and those three pillars are communication, and that's communicating good, bad, ugly, wants and needs. It doesn't matter what it's about. It's communicating, period, about everything. The other one is compromising, because you could communicate all you want, but if you don't <laughs> compromise on that communication, it, it's it, you both don't have the same wants and needs, right? So mm -hmm. compromising, balancing out that that wants and needs, and um, and then also the third one is romance, where it's where you need to fall in love with each other constantly. You have to have date nights. You need to be sexy with each other because it could become monotonous of mm -hmm. relationship advantage. We've been together for thirty three years as boyfriend and girlfriend, and married thirty two years. It becomes. Okay, you were the same person, same thing every day. Could end up being a roommate. It, you, you become roommates, alive. correct. Yeah. So you need to, those three, and, and everybody tells me which one's more important than the other. <laughs> None. If you don't have all three, you are you can't work it out because yeah. all three are super important. And remember uh, what you came up with years ago. We practiced it mm -hmm. and we continue to practice it. My wife, my awesome life partner, when we came up with non-refundable minutes, and it's trademarked, not for a business, because it means so much to us, just like PMA, you don't get your minutes back. You will never get that minute back. No matter who you are. So do not argue. If it's not gonna cause a divorce and it's not really a deep reason to argue, don't argue. So many of us argue, and then we leave this void in our relationships for four days, five days, two weeks, there's no sex going on. There's, this is, yeah, you're smiling, you're forgiving each other, but there's still that vibration that's yeah. still, you know, you're both separated for a moment in time. Mm -hmm. Don't argue if it's not gonna cause a divorce. It's wasted energy mm -hmm. because you're just not gonna fertilize it the correct way. Mm -hmm. You know, and that momentum when you argue, at least for us, dude, a little argument that means nothing, that does not matter, led to so many arguments. I said so many things that I shouldn't have said. I lost control, vice versa. And then it just builds in an ugly way. Mm -hmm. But you have control of that. We have control of that, of how, it's not what you say, it's it's how you say it. Yes, yes. And was that an adjustment period? Because I know it's tricky, right? And I know Sophia's smiling because I know Bobby's a pretty passionate, yeah. intense guy. Yeah. Um, was it an adjustment period for you guys both to kind of learn each other's oh love God. languages, communication I style? I think yeah. Bobby and I, really started knowing how to handle the three pillars that we're talking about and then not fighting for no reason for stupidities mm -hmm. 15 years into our marriage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was, I love that. Uh, it took us that long. And I sort of think there's a lot of people have asked me that sure. question too. And I, we and him sat down one time when we were in a group like this and I said, my God, we were 15 years of like really bittering, bickering at each other and fighting for no reason, being three days without speaking to each other, and then to come and say sorry and to stay with each other. Like, what? So I think that like at our 15-year mark is when we said, wait a minute, this is either 
we have to change something. And that's when the communication, the three pillars, you know, uh, balancing and, and. And that's oh, before man. the exit. A lot of people will say, oh, well, yeah. Bobby and Sophie, yeah, yeah, you can say that now because you exited and you sold the business for $1 billion on your own terms. Yeah, it's easy for you to say that. No, 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 guys. We started getting our act together way before that happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's one of you. One of you are given more effort in this relationship right now, I can assure you, and you know exactly which one of you are given that effort. The other one that is not stepping up, i.e. that Bobby in the past, was just not stepping up, given more effort, like Sobe was given effort in our relationship. You gotta recognize that. You gotta know it's you. Bobby recognized it. And when I recognized it, I focused on what matters to me. Mm -hmm. My family, my wife, my children, you know, not being a flash dancer. I was so unfocused. I care about what you thought, you thought, you thought. And I missed the most important thing, Omar. Mm -hmm. My family, yeah. my wife. When I got my act together, man, and I got distracted. Even when I got it together, I lost it. Mm -hmm. it, it takes work. Mm -hmm. You got to rep the muscle. Yeah, dude. It's just something. And when did you guys start the business? How old were you guys when you guys first started? Because I know there was, in the last interview, we talked about it. But if this is, you know, audience's first time listening, it was a process. You guys started a bunch of failed businesses that didn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk, talk to the audience a little bit about that, yeah, some of the yeah. businesses you guys started before. So uh, I'm going to get a little bit into that. And then I would challenge you to go back to the podcast we did with Omar while we were in California about two and a half years ago. It's a lot of good gems because when I, when I look at it again, there's incredible value there. And I want to just mention, if I may, Omar, mm -hmm. so many of us, we look at interviews and we look at podcasts. Now, remember what I just said, Bobby, we look at them. What I want you to do is listen to them. Close your eyes and listen to the interviews from this point forward on any podcast that you choose to focus on. So it's very important. And, and the reason I know that, um, that book, uh, Upsiders, that I wrote, um, and I tried it twice with different book companies and all that, they were trying to make it into something that is just not me. Mm -hmm. This book goes into great detail as to your question on how we did it. Because before your business can shine and blossom, before you can sell it for a billion, before you can buy that next real estate investment, before you even start reinvesting in your own business, non-real estate, you have to get yourself right. You'll be so surprised how much can shine when you focus. So when Bobby started, man, I left at the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. I was all over the place. I come from a family that has a lot of love, a lot of passion. I call passion... It's other people call it chaos. Mm -hmm. My father had 14, 15 children, many different ladies. He met my mother when he was 50. He had me and my mother was 27 years old. Matter of fact, not too long ago, I found out they weren't even married when they had me, which is totally cool. It doesn't bother me, but it's just fascinating how more you Dude, find out yeah. things you, you look back and reflect saying, wow, man, they must've went through a struggle. I'm so grateful for my parents. My mom is still around. She's 83. Wow. My dad passed at 94, and we had a lot of passion in our household. We grew up uh, struggling like a lot of family members uh, with no financial means, uh, not because they were not available. I think we didn't even realize we were broke. We thought we were doing okay <laughs> with the yeah. electricity constantly down, the water constantly down. That was normal to you. Oh, dude, yeah. Palmetto, no exaggeration, and she hates when I say this, but I'm transparent. I'm here to help another Bobby. Um Dude, I remember when I was sleeping, you know, you sleep with your mouth open because there's no AC going on <laughs> and palmetto roaches <laughs> flicker out of your mouth oh because they God. settle in there for a second, oh God. flicker, they're just looking for just food or something, <laughs> grew up in fleas, all the good stuff, nothing bad, guys. This is a story that many people have. Yeah. That's who I'm talking to. That's what matters to me. That's, That's right. who I'm talking to. I wanted out of that situation. So I went home to mom and I grad, I didn't even, I failed at the third grade, Omar. Who fails at the third grade? <laughs> I mean, that's like an automatic pass. So for sure, if I did it and I continue to do it, so can others. Yeah. So I tell my mom at the ninth grade, so mom, school's not for me. She instantly knew before I finished the sentence or whatever I was going to burp out. She says, I agree. Let's go for it. Let's leave school. Even so much that the school had an issue with it. 
And I started my journey. My journey was to help my mother. I started doing takeout at Pasquale's on 57th Avenue in Hialeah. And then I started seeing people that had money, meaning that they were dining out. They were having a dinner. And I was like, wow, that's the life I want. Fast yeah. forward, multiple jobs in the hospitality. Like my mom, she waited two and a half jobs full time as a waitress. Before Denny's, it was Sambo's. Yeah. Graveyard ship with you and your buddies, your family out of a wedding. Three in the morning, that awesome lady, yeah. that was my mom waiting on you. Wow. Then she would go walk home because there was no car. She had to walk home wow. for a few hours, get ready to do another gig at another restaurant. Wow. Amazing. I didn't even realize the struggle to many, many later, in, later years in life. What's it, what's it like to get to see your mother who went from that to like now see you guys and the success you've had? What, what is that? No, my mom, she was just here. We just had a, 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 a she constantly tells me and, and how proud she is. And she's overwhelmed. Yeah. She's overwhelmed because she remembers those struggles more than me. Yeah. Can you imagine the struggle she was having? Yeah. My father would sleep upstairs. Mm -hmm. My mother, dude, was sleep on the couch all my life. She was on that couch. Wow. My father did not, he was not bothered by the electricity or water out. Matter of fact, when my father was 62 years old and I was 12 years old, mm -hmm. and I love my father, man. He banged out on retirement, social security check for $400 a month. <laughs> and we're here broke and my mother's waiting on tables. Wow. And so I can't even imagine the struggle my mother was going through. This furniture, Yeah. we never owned it. It was rent -a center. They were constantly picking this up every other week because there's no payment my mom can make. Yeah. So fast forward, I go wow. to this hospitality stuff and I want to be like those people. I want to have a good life. And because every time I went home, I seen the opposite, all this chaos. And we were stuck knowing now we're stuck because our own fault, we were stuck. Right. So as I got older, I started waiting on tables with just some struggles up and down in businesses. I was so impatient. I wanted the money fast and I needed it now. That's why nothing's sustainable when you have that mindset. Right. I didn't get it, man. For so many years I battled with this and then I met the best mentors in my life that changed my life. Mm -hmm. Flash dancers. These are the ones that have that $700,000 watch that they came and afford on and they just have the need to show you that I am successful. Yeah. I have this car, I have all these material things. I have the need. They 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 grabbed onto me, man. I I wanted that. I wanted yeah. to be them. Yeah. And how old were you when that first set in for you? Uh, it started setting in. Uh, and I'm gonna guess maybe 18 years old. Mm -hmm. It just attached itself to me. Mm -hmm. It just it just it, it it owned me. Yeah. It owned me. I got so distracted. That's all I wanted. And I was very impatient. I talk heavily a lot of it in the book. Through a lot of crashes, there was one day that changed my life forever. Mm -hmm. And that's the Bobby you're looking at right now. Mm -hmm. You don't know the Bobby I was talking about. He was just a taker. Mm -hmm. He was somebody you didn't want to do business with. Mm -hmm. He was somebody you didn't, you didn't want to be associated with. They warned Sophie to stay away from me. Mm -hmm. They warned her, her family members, her friends that knew about me mm -hmm. to stay away from that dude. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, I'm walking out of my in-law's house living at their house again on a weekday walking out late in the afternoon i'm walking out of their home in hialeah on east 8th street east 8th lane a car pulls up a black mustang beat up black mustang windows down my wife in the front seat she pulls in pink 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 because it's so hot in south florida <laughs> the humidity and a little child, Pee Wee's in the back seat. My daughter Priscilla, same look, Peach, but they're both smiling at Bobby. Mm -hmm. I was so ashamed of myself. I that day for some reason changed my life. Fast forward, I'm missing a lot. That's why I challenge you go back to the other interview we did with Omar. I get a little bit more in detail. How, how old were you in this but, moment? I was 23, okay. 22, 23. I was 23. So when we we met. Six months later, we were pregnant, dude, basically. I mean, we were, when we got married. You don't waste any time. Yeah, we, we, it was, it was a, you know, a lot yeah. of stuff going on. So check this out. That day changes my life because that car, that Mustang was not, I didn't even have a car when I met Sophie. I never even had a car, man. Mm -hmm. 
that car, that black Mustang was given to us by her parents that didn't even have the money to do so. And they went out and got a car for us because I was so freaking lazy, so distracted, trying to make that money now, knowing that I was just fooling myself. I was damaging everyone's lives, including myself. I was doing no different than my family was doing it, but in a worse way. Mm -hmm. That day, guess what happened to Bobby, man? I went out, dude, got a job. Yeah. I waited on tables. And guess what? When I first started waiting on tables again, maybe the first month into the gig, a big party, like 10, 12 people, you're having these big parties and you have all your family together and you just, yeah. you're vibrating. There's a bunch yeah. of drinks going on. Yeah. There's a bunch of us. And I'm walking to this table to wait on this table. And guess what, Omar? A lot of, majority of everyone at that table, I knew them well. Mm -hmm. I used to hang out with them. Mm -hmm. I used to flash dance with them. And here's Bobby walking to that table with his rusty Pelican uniform on Key Biscayne. But you know when I knew I was ready, my brother, and I was really, really new? It didn't bother me. I was there mm -hmm. to serve them. How can I give you the best experience? Because I needed to give that a good experience. I was ready for a new life, a new improvement, a new direction. Mm -hmm. That's when you know you're ready, when you can confront things that you don't want to confront and be okay with it. Say, I don't want this any longer. I am fine without it. Why? Because it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. That's where this whole legacy thing came in. And guess what, dude? That amazing in-laws, that Dixie, my, my mother-in-law was no longer with us. I burned a lot of bridges. Mm -hmm. She heard me talking about a business opportunity. Me and her, her, her daughter, we were talking about either doing this business or that business. Go back to some of my addictions I had with the classified. You'll find out, out that about plus and upsiders you can find on Amazon. She hears me and this business opportunity was $1,700. And back in the day, these amazing strong ladies in their bra, they had their keys, like a hundred keys for a hundred doors, <laughs> everything, yeah. their beeper, everything. And then they had their cash. She yeah. had on or about right about what I needed. I don't speak Spanish. Even though my last name's Castro, my father's Puerto Rican, my mother's Jewish and Irish, Sophie's Cuban, she's very fluent. Mm -hmm. But I understand Spanish well enough. She does not even understand English, but she caught my vibration. She must have. Mm -hmm. Mira, she tells me, Mira, she gives me the $1,700. Wow. That $1,700 took us to sell the company for a billion dollars. When you get focus and you focus on what matters, I was a waiter, guys. I failed at the third grade. I didn't get through the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. I didn't hit a lotto ticket. I have no investors. That real estate portfolio that we own, $750 million today, strong in the, today's market, giving us tremendous amount of cash flow, 500,000 every month. There was no investors. Mm -hmm. And we started that, not because we sold the company, we started that years ago, compounding them, one home at a time, to duplexes, to triplexes, to now big campuses of $100 million plus. The power of you, man, you're one out of 8 billion supply and demand. There's only one of you, Bobby. Can you imagine if you give yourself focus? Mm -hmm. I know I got a little bit off here, but that's all it is, man. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard to make the cuts, mm -hmm. especially now you have so much inbound. We have 70,000 thoughts a day. And social media, media. Social, yeah. everything yeah. you're telling you. Dude, There's so much bad, pressure. Fast, yeah. There's, it's just everywhere, man. Mm -hmm. But that's why if you're in a relationship like I am, mm -hmm. and I have this beautiful individual next to me, and I slipped, guys. I'm on it every day. She keeps me accountable, and I keep her accountable. We have a 100-year legacy plan. That's a lot of work, a lot of focus. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into the real estate yeah. real quick. Sorry about all that. Uh, no, no, it's, no, no, that's wonderful, bro. I love your passion. Even people in the comments, they would always say, like, you ask one question, and he gives, like, five answers. <laughs> They'll give, like, an answer, and then four of the next questions. But I love it. No, it's good, because this is a real fit that people are dealing with. Um, I want to ask, can you just rifle off? Because for some of the audience, you know, they might see your company with Exit and go, well, yeah, it looks like it was easy for you guys. But there was a bunch of different stuff you started, right? I know you said you were addicted to the classified ads and business opportunities. Can you rifle through just real quick some of the different failed businesses you guys had and maybe the age yeah, we're at? More. So people can relate to it and see the hum humanity behind it. Absolutely. Uh, starting, my first business was a janitorial cleaning service where 
I wanted to go around companies and I was young, very young, go around companies and clean their office. You guys know companies of that nature. And I was striking out. I was striking out because I didn't have the correct insurance. I didn't have the correct presentation. I didn't have a lot of, I didn't really have a lot of focus. You were just winging it. I was yeah. just winging it, man. Just yeah. doing it part-time, thinking I was doing it full-time, <laughs> dude. Yeah, yeah. Just winging it. Then I almost gave up on it and I walked into an adult establishment, Pink Pussycat on 36th Street in Miami, next to Miami Highlight. They hired me, mm -hmm. right? I mean, before I even finished my pitch, they hired me. I said, okay, this is an easy gig. So I went to a lot of the same establishments, picked up all the accounts. They found out that some weaknesses I had, insurance, I was so young here and there. They fired me. It was all my fault. And I quit that business and I jumped to another business, another business opportunity. I had another business opportunity before Craigslist came out. We wanted to have a Craigslist back then. We, 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 we had this great idea. An idea is worthless if you can't execute and you can't be disciplined, you can't be consistent. We probably had, in, before we focused on our, that main business, uh, I would say 15, 15 businesses. Yeah, For example, if I was hanging out with you mm -hmm. and you were telling me about your business, oh, Bobby, man, you should get into it. Now, I just started a business six months ago. I'm all fired up. And now I'm hearing you, oh man, I'm rocking and rolling. I see the little flash things going on. And what do you do? All oh, this, you should get into it. Now I just completely <laughs> slashed what I just started and I'm jumping over here. So that, that I can go on and on and on like a lot of people are doing yeah. out there. And you were in your 20s at this stage? Doing yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And how are you feeling, Sophia, when he was having all these ideas? Were you supportive? Were you like, oh, no, Yeah, you know what? I never said no to him on anything. I, would, I actually, Bobby and I met and... As soon as we met, he asked me to drop my, my, I was just working. I was just working as a secretary and an assistant at, at a business. He's like, I want you to come and work with me. I'm like, what do you mean work with me? What do you <laughs> and I'm broke. I'm broke. <laughs> he has no idea. I started a business that's really not a business. And I'm telling her a quitter job. I'm like, you know, I have a car payment. I have my insurance. I have to maintain myself, you know, yeah. clothes wise, whatever I want. I'm. He's like, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know, whatever. Me, like a young individual, I'm like, perfect. I'll go work with you and we're going to pay our bills. Well, when they dropped my job and I go see that there was no money coming. Really no transparency for Bobby. I was like, oh, my God, thank God that my parents, not that they by no means were super rich nor doing well. They just lived, you know, very organized with their income. They had it they would never say no to us to live with them. So we had a, a room over our head and food. So we were okay, but I was like, oh my God, what are we doing? But I never said no. I was there, always- There was, there, was, there was one time, dude, this is the jumper. I was a great jumper. <laughs> there was one time for a moment. So we're, uh, we're living in Sophie's house and I didn't want to accept that because I had two, I had an ego and an ego is not your amigo. I have just incredible. So I tell Sophie, hey, we're gonna move into my parents' house because it, my, my mom finally got out of that house. It was a lot of misery. There's a, there's a lot of, sure. you know, a lot of passion throughout the years. So the house was empty. Nobody wanted to go to this house. That's how much pain was there. This is when we started making a little bit of money. And she knew in about that? business or? Not in the finance. No, in the finance business. business. Yeah. So, the one that we stole, yeah. but the So we just, part so when, when I was working at Rusty Pelican, and in having a day job selling the Better Business Bureau, she was at a medical office. We started this business that we eventually, it came to fruition. We sold it for a billion dollars. That's where it migrated to. So finally, dude, I'm starting to focus because I gave you that example when I walked out of my in-laws house, I got serious. Well, guess what happened? I quit the uh, Rusty Public, my gate. I didn't quit, I gave him notice. Normally the old Bobby would just quit and just go off. I gave him notice. And then, because I didn't need to, was the business started supplementing my income. Mm -hmm. Then eventually, I didn't need the Better Business Bureau. It started going enough to just make up for two yeah. sure. jobs I had now. It's the business supporting it. So I'd go home at the time at her in-laws. Sophie, let's move to my parents. I'm going to renovate it all. I'm going to make it pretty and all this stuff. We had no money to renovate. We just supplemented our income. <laughs> so my incredible life partner says, okay, Bob, let's go. We had our little daughter, Priscilla, who's 31 years old today. We go there in Hialeah. And this shows you the power, of what I'm going to represent to you, of what you don't realize because you're so used to it. 
we go there and I didn't see it. Even years later, I go there, Omar, mm -hmm. and we're tatting. I got painters to paint it. I cleaned it, it smelled clean. Yeah, it was good. It. It was, it, we got the rooms to go furniture. We financed it. We finally got our credit re fixed. Mm -hmm. We're feeling really good. We just got, I think, our first Corolla, brand new. We qualified. And, and this thing smelled like a model home. Mm -hmm. I was just so excited. And then we bring us in, Sophie, I, and Priscilla. And we're spending the first night there. And I am so, I, I'm starting to feel, I'm starting oh, to understand awesome. like, okay, this is, this. I'm seeing some drips here. She's, I noticed the last couple of days of that time, she was kind of a little off a little bit. And there was one time that she and I at the company working from one of the rooms at my mother's house. Mm -hmm. I was working and she says in, in a beautiful way, I, Bobby, I can't do this no more. I thought she was leaving me. <laughs> so I said, I, we, what can't you do no more? I, Bobby, I, I, we, can, we can't live here no more. She was so cool, man. She didn't want to really make me feel bad. Yeah. And she goes, Bobby, this is, not, this is not safe for our child or for us. There's too many ticks here. And she goes, look, and I look around the screens. It was because me everywhere. I didn't see it. Coming out of the drywall. I don't know. I'm like, it, guys. Oh my God. Our the kids are having that freaking Lyme disease or whatever. Think about what I, yeah. think about what I just represented. Yeah. I didn't even see it because I was so used to that. That's mm -hmm. how I grew up. Mm -hmm. What are you not seeing that's actually there that you have to change? I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. And when I looked, Omar, we got out. We got out. And, and, and it, 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 that, I don't know if you're digging what I'm saying. It's just, of course, of course. See it, man. Yeah. Because I was so used to it and I was away from it for a few years. Mm -hmm. But it was so ingrained in being normal. So ingrained in the routine. You're just the, the smell. And she was holding her breath the whole time. And I was just like, hey, I didn't think of this a model home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How old are you at this time? You guys are in the late class uh, or you're 30? Probably uh, 20. I was probably 20 because 25 and born. So how old were you? Know, uh, we get probably like, yeah, I was probably like Priscilla was two years old. So maybe like 22, 23 years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. was, what was the lowest point you guys were ever at financially? Was that it? Or was there a moment? Oh, no. Uh, there was, uh, remember the like, yeah, oh, oh for sure, dude, I'm going to give you, uh, so we were, uh, we were in Amway. And one of, one of Bobby's, uh, ventures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was jumping in something and, um, and jumping out of something that I really even hardly didn't even give it effort, didn't give it a focus. We got to go to an open. They call them, I think, Monday meetings. Mm -hmm. And you got to pay $5 for every time. And we were bouncing checks on those $5. I mean, the people were so nice. And they're, <laughs> yeah, we were writing you know, checks we're, for $5 yeah, yeah. and we didn't have it in the yeah, bounce. Post date in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can catch so, it next week. So yeah. one day, one day, there's a big, a, a big, individual that has success in Amway that was going to come and speak to our group and it had to be like maybe a hundred people in South Florida, something really. So we, we wanted to really, we need some clothes. We didn't have no clothes. We go to Goodwill in Okeechobee and Hialeah. <laughs> we bought our, we bought our outfits on Goodwill. And at the same, that time we were on food stamps. We were really, we we're really, uh, and that's why I love me and my wife, man. We've been through so much together. Yes. Um, that's why this money situation is not a situation. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, I can assure you, man, money is not the fireworks. I'll get into hopefully that later. We go, we're sitting in the Amway meeting, Omar. Yeah. And four of us. About my brother, my brother and his wife. wife. So I, I'm the one who said, hey, let's go to, let's go to Goodwill. I think we spent, it had to be maybe no more than 20 bucks for all of us. Right. Shoes, everything, jacket, <laughs> everything. <laughs> about half hour, I'm guessing about an hour later, uh, I'm starting to, like <laughs> starting to itch uh, and, and I'm pretty, and I'm like an iguana dude. I grew up pretty uh, tough. So I, but this Brazilian, was, yeah. and this was, this was seeping. And then I see my wife doing this <laughs> and then, and then I do this yeah. and my wife tells me like this. And I said, what's going on? And they were holes <laughs> in the, in the, in the bottle shoes. <laughs> my brother is itching and all we did, <laughs> we were so broke, but with so much love, we started laughing. We were just overwhelmed with laughing that we had to walk out because Check. this is unbelievable. Five dollars and you have to, and goodwill clothes that we didn't even get to why. And you know what? Yes, we're no longer in Amway. That was a moment in time. And you know what? 
not because Amway didn't have an opportunity, we again jumped. Mm -hmm. It didn't come quick enough. I needed the money now. Damn. Yeah. I wasn't willing to work for it, wait for it. Mm -hmm. That's incredible, man. And and as you guys like reflect on these stories, you know, we're sitting here in your, you know, beautiful home that was probably what, north of 15 to 20 ish million, and then you got the property next door you just bought, you're turning into a recreation center. Does it, it, does it, is it surreal to you guys to think back to those days? Were there times where you almost thought it wasn't going to happen? I never no. forget those days. Yeah, we I never, you know what, I've, I'm, I'm super humble about that. Like, I'm, I'll never forget where we came from. Yes, is this great, wonderful, I love it. This is to tell you the truth, Bobby and I um, have been together 33 years. This is our first new home mm -hmm. that's this big. When our kids grew up, and that no they already had money, no that we already had money, we always lived in a small remodeled home. We never spend this kind of money. The reason why we spend this kind of money was because when we exited, we had done a spec, we had thought we were gonna be doing a spec home with this one lot next door and we knew we were selling the company, the second slice of the company and we decided, I told Bobby and Bobby didn't want to. I said, I really want a new home, big home, that I could feel, you know, that I, that I that want to. That. I always wanted that, right? Because, you know, it's just a dream that you have, right? right, right. Um, but this is our first home that we actually spent this kind of money. We never had, even when we were making money, we always lived in a 2,000 square foot home, remodeled. Yeah, in the beach, like here in the same area on the water, but it was nowhere near the caliber. So our kids, when we did need it, because now it's Bobby and I in this humongous home, even though our kids come in, uh, come up quite often and use it, but um, we never said we. This is our. This is not our first priority because homes. we're investors. We're and, and not our first priority. Homes, as I, I think you and I had a chat with it. It's not a financial investment. Mm -hmm. If you think about back in the 1950s, this is where you raise your family. This was that. It was never to say what's my house going to be worth in three years, or whatever. It's a personal, intimate investment, not a financial investment. A lot of people get skewed when I mention that. They think I'm criticizing home. A home is where you raise your children, you make love to the one you love, you have barbecues, you read a book, you invite fr a friend like you over. That's a home. It's mm -hmm. not a financial investment. Yeah, we spent a whole bunch of this. It's all free and clear. My children's houses are free and clear. Our other homes are free and clear. But because we can write the check, mm -hmm. I would recommend to people to think twice about getting emotionally connected that it's a financial investment. Mm -hmm. It's a personal investment. And matter of fact, that's better than a financial investment. So there's mm -hmm. two different buckets. And... um you know, I, I think that's very important to I, make that distinction. I, I, for yeah, me, yeah. it is, and people yeah. think differently. Would you have listened to that advice when you were sort of earlier on in your career, or were you? You know, Sophie and I caught wind of it. So, again, when I was a flash dancer, and then I was a, <laughs> no longer a flash dancer, I started really paying attention. I, I was, I became a very good reader. Today, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty good reader, man. Mm -hmm. um, I was never like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I started reading of how to become wealthy, not rich. You see, your non-refundable minutes, all your energy and effort, if it, it's the same exact effort and energy if you practice getting wealthy, not rich. Rich, you're only a hamster on a wheel. Mm -hmm. If you get off that wheel, are you financially free? If the answer is no, then your efforts are not about wealthy. Mm -hmm. So when I started focusing more about wealth, and not just getting rich, because when we, we started making 250, mm -hmm. 300, 500,000, a million dollars, we caught it early to start doing something with our dollars. We call it stack and rack. People think cash is trash. I disagree. Cash is king. Without cash, you can't buy anything as to a financial transaction. Sure. Your, your energy is far worth more, it's more superior. You're investing your time. So we were always mindful to realize that because we used to get in credit card debt. We used to zip up to $100,000, $50,000 in credit card debt saying, how do we get here? We finally paid it off. We did all this. And then we got back there again. We're back to $100,000. What are we doing wrong? Mm -hmm. Then I started really tuning in to actually, how do the wealthy people do? See, there's a lot of people on social media. A lot of people, we belong to a group. There's about 81 members. You're talking about... <laughs> 
200 billion dollars or so personal net worth mm -hmm. this is serious sophie and i are probably the poorest of the group they asked me bobby why do you give so much energy out there what are you doing mm -hmm. i care for another bobby i wish there was another bobby to wake me up like I'm trying to wake up others. How long am I gonna do this? I don't know, but it's a moment in time. Mm -hmm. My son, Brandon, he's the one who put me on this three years ago, put us on it or under three years when we sold the company. This is what we used to do to our employees, our partners. Mm -hmm. We used to let them know what they're doing wrong with their time, how to invest better. Why do you wanna make more money? How to stack and route, how to really know and understand the power of a penny. If you do a Google search, mm -hmm. the power of a compound of a penny You'll be staggered how many millions of dollars that equates to very rapidly, right. the compound effect. Right. So we never really, when the flash thing has stopped, hope, think it stopped a little earlier. Mm -hmm. Man, we were able to build something besides our business. We were also having other flows of income. Mm -hmm. What you can do with your time is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. When you knock out some of this crap that does not matter, some of these awesome people that you love, their family members, these are awesome people, but what you only have certain amount of capacity, Bobby. And if you're if you're filled, what and you're not willing to sub out some things, how are you ever gonna be able to intake new ways, new things, new people? Yeah, no, I love that. And I know you guys help a lot of people. You guys have a coaching program, you have your book out, you help people with real estate and you experience real financial freedom. Um, I wanna get into that, but real quick, I wanna ask, how old were you guys? when you started the financial services company and what was the impetus to start it? We started it in, uh, I believe in 1994. I got in the industry in 94, Omar. Yeah. Got how, you, how old got were the money you? broker. Yeah. So what, what was it that allowed you to first see the opportunity or was it just little by little and then the bigger? So what happened to me, dude, mm -hmm. I was waiting on tables at Key Biscayne, that Rusty Pelican. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you there was a, a business that came about for $1,700? Yep. Well, I'm I'm working on the Rusty Pelican, and also during the day, as I mentioned, I'm selling memberships for the Better Business Bureau, meaning that I will call you if you're a business owner and, and find out if you have an interest in this membership and tell you about the value of the membership, why it's important that you should consider buying the membership. Mm -hmm. And they would give you leads to call on these businesses. Mm -hmm. So back in this, in this book, I was in a... I had an addiction of getting classified ads. Just imagine right now social media, make 10,000, make 5,000, buy this program, do that one, buy, get, join this master, ma mastermind, do all this stuff. That was me, but on a constant effort, just didn't stop, my, my, my fingers were black. But you revert, I reverted. I would hit those classified sometimes, mm -hmm. even without her even knowing. Mm -hmm. It was that bad. It yeah. was no different of being hooked on crack, heroin, alcohol i was addicted dude mm -hmm. well guess what i reverted but somebody and just recently two months ago um i opened up to god in my life i never believed in god and and he's been sending me many messages so that that's a cool that. thing thank awesome. you dude thank you back yeah thank you and there was a message i was sent a lead comes in mm -hmm. the same company that i sent away for a classified ad Again, I, re I responded to a classified ad. I got the package, got the whole stimulation going. Ah, this is the next one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I get the lead for my job to call on them to sell a membership. Oh my, and I couldn't help myself. Yeah. I go, I sell the membership. They hated the membership, but they bought the membership under one condition. I come work for them. Mm -hmm. That led me into the industry. I became good at it. I started recognizing people skills because of my beautiful mother, mm -hmm. because she waited and busted her butt on tables. Today, they give you the Apple computer. You just press the button, they get 22%, 20%. Back in the day, my mother had to work hard to give you the best experience for that 18% gratuity. Mm -hmm. She really, really worked hard for it. So I get this, this, this opportunity to work. I'm getting good at it, only because of my people skills, because of the hospitality work mm -hmm. of serving. And then I, you're all about value. Like right now I'm giving so much value because it's from my inner core that I really want to help another Bobby. I really want to help another Bobby. That's what you're feeling. That's what you're hearing. You can't deny it. Mm -hmm. That's what I did at my job. Mm -hmm. And what happens? You become a magnet for only capital Y's, yeses. Mm -hmm. 
Everyone spends all their time on these closers, these sales training, and they're jamming it down the customer's throat. They're forcing the sale. Man, I, I've generated billions and billions. I'm talking about bees, billions of dollars in originations and sales with people skills. Mm -hmm. Not what you say is how you say it. Mm -hmm. Nice tone, kindness. You never get a no. Mm -hmm. That just started coming in. I was really good at it. And the dude says, hey, man, I'm on my way out. I'm exiting. My two sons, uh, they're hooked on drugs. One was on heroin, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And here's my Rolodex. You know what to do with it. Like he just gave me a bunch of contacts. And the rest is history. Rest is his history. And then the three pieces, what were the three pieces uh, in terms of the exits, give or take? What were the ballparks? Well, we sold. Uh, so we, we uh, the company wasn't for sale. And this is another good lesson. I'm, I'm glad you, you, you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people got fixated on real estate. Mm -hmm. Today, 2023, it's a different cycle, different market. We've seen it coming. We actually seen it coming two years ago mm -hmm. because we're all about it. We're forward thinkers. Back in the day, there was a moment before the financial global crisis that it was a worse FOMO of real estate. Matter of fact, anybody can get a loan 110% financing. I mean, it was just on. It was hard to miss. We were building this business that we eventually sold for a billion dollars. And at one time, we got distracted because everybody else was doing real estate. Again, reverting. You can always fall victim. That's why you got to work on yourself every day. Everyone was talking about real estate. We had no idea about how to invest in real estate. Start big, go big. And because we had a few dollars and why not go big? You can afford to. Right. Had no clue. Well, we went big. We decided we were going to be condo conversion con converters. We would buy some apartment buildings, kick everybody out, renovate it to the Mac Daddy status, and then sell them as condos. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't work out for a number of things. We bought wrong because in real estate, how you make money and how you create wealth is on the buy. It's never on the sale. Right. We did all this. We got crushed. Markets changed. Markets were changing. We almost filed bankruptcy. Wow. What we did... We ran from it. We just ran to the company. We were trying to decide at that time which two bankruptcy attorneys we're going to go with. We personally signed Omar, and we also put that company as a guarantee. Wow. Holy shit. Not knowing what you're doing. Yeah. And then you go back. My brother, Eric, say, Eric, you take care of this mess. I go back. We had another partner, Albert. He's back. We're rolling up our sleeves in the mud and I am just focused on that company started growing even more so all along it was a beautiful baby that we were neglected we weren't giving it energy and focus remember I said when you do so only one thing happens it grows it started growing to the point where we didn't have to file bankruptcy it was growing to the point we didn't have to do all the workouts we just wrote the checks mm -hmm. and then three four years later I don't know when we get a knock on the door Hey, we want to, we want to invest. We want to buy 30% of your company based on a $250 million valuation. And we want to pay all cash. What do you say? Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah we're that's the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what we were, didn't know what we were doing. We said, yes, it closed fairly quick because it was a great deal. Matter of fact, it was such a good deal that we cheated ourselves. We were building a business here, giving energy here when the market enterprise value, if you're a business owner, you got to pay attention to this. A lot of you are focusing here because you think you're doing good. You're making some money. Things are growing, all that. But what is your company really worth? What is the market willing to pay for and what do they want? Why would someone pay $250 million? When we started figuring out the multiples, how this game is played, and they had the first right refusal, awesome people. Even today, they're amazing, these people. They had the first order refuse. Hey, if you ever want to take any more chips off, we're here, man. We love this investment. Figure it out when you get focused. Okay, this is how it works. Good. No more energy here. We're going to focus on here. 11 months, just under a year, we go back saying, hey, we're going to take 19% more off and we're going to control and still own 51% of our company. Remember, they wired us $25 million, $75 million. They wired it to us because they bought 30% based on 250 mm -hmm. and we own 70. Well, we want to take another 19 off. We're ready. But it's not 250, Omar. Mm -hmm. It's $600 million. Mm -hmm. You're out of your mind. Mm -hmm. 
And when you tell customers, I understand. Mm -hmm. I understand. I understand it's not cheap. It closed six months later. <laughs> then we put more fuel to that, more understanding, focus in more. Wow, did I not know it works just like real estate. Mm -hmm. Enterprise value is selling a company that's identical to real estate. Then ultimately when my grandbabies came in our life, our grandbabies, Ocean, who just turned seven, Oakley four, all this stuff, mm -hmm. are building our, my, my children, my son's getting married this uh, uh, June this year. We then say, you know what, Sophie? We wanna, we wanna do something else in life now. We wanna fly free. We never knew what we were gonna do with these podcasts. This is not, this doesn't, this here for a moment in time. We sold it for a billion dollars, got a big old check. Fireworks didn't go off. But because now God's in my life, and I don't know where that'll go, you know, it's such an overwhelming process itself for the Bible. I don't even know where to start, dude. Mm -hmm. I just know he's leading us. I know it was a right decision. A lot of people ask, do you regret it? Because that same company today is four times more. And I knew that, obviously, because that's how I studied for it, to make that exit. And I feel good today. Mm -hmm. I feel good. I'm so blessed. Hundreds and hundreds of people today, that company has 12, 1400 employees. Without those awesome people, if you're watching, thank you. You've impacted our life. I'm grateful to say when we exited, people became, individuals became multimillionaires because we had a phantom stock equity play. We love everybody there and all their families. So what we did in that company is pretty much what Sophie and I are doing to a select few. Mm -hmm. I'm coaching very selectively, one-on-one, -on -one to some business owners very selectively because I know a lot of the don't want a flash dancer in my life. That's a heavy lift. Flash dancer, the only one who's gonna fix you is you, but I'm helping some business owners uh, build enterprise value in their company, getting their stuff right. It feels good helping another soul. We have a small real estate group of only 15 people, no more than that, mm -hmm. because the money's not important. We're not doing that for, for money. Actually just trying to help somebody just adjust their lens a little bit. Yeah, get to the next level. Do it, but we did. And then talking about that, you know, I know you help people for free and then you guys also have the programs, you guys got your book. Why do you think real estate is so important of an investment? And I'm, it might sound like an obvious question, obviously, because of long-term appreciation, but could you give the audience a little bit of context as to, you know, maybe there's people listening who are, you know, entrepreneurs making a little bit of money and they want to get into investing. They see what's happening in the market. People are fearful. They don't know what to do, what to play. I know you mentioned you guys had investments prior and you realized you kind of fumbled the ball a little bit. You went back and said, you know, I want to go single family and then a duplex, triplex. What advice do you have for people, A, in real estate and B, in this market um, to really start thinking long-term to build wealth? Well, real estate can change your life. Um, it's not a threat of technology. Technology is threatened pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. It's not threatening the roof. Mm -hmm. Real estate has amazing tax benefits. Real estate will give you passive cash flow as it does for us for 500,000 every single month. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, when you buy real estate, that is how you make money. In today's market, just January 12th, that just passed mm -hmm. a few days ago, we sold a deal in today's very interesting soft market and we made $10 million profit mm -hmm. in today's market. A few months before that, we sold another one, a non-legacy asset. We made $15 million. Mm -hmm. This is real money. This is stuff that is reported to the IRS. This is, this is stuff that I'm representing is real. And that is today when people are getting compressed and feeling pressure because they bought it the wrong way. They put the wrong debt on it. They didn't have any clue what they were doing. Like I illustrated what we almost filed bankruptcy for by getting distracted. Now, say you have a business mm -hmm. and you have a great business. You just don't think it's great because you're influenced by other people possibly convincing you it's not great, not because of representing that. That's a vibration you're getting because you're a little bit off track. Real estate can change your life. For example, this 2,500 units that we own these doors, most of them will be for our grandchildren and beyond. This will feed them. This will continue to create more positive cash flow. It just keeps increasing. 
Now, Bobby, aren't you if in fact aren't you being impacted by today's cycle? No. Mm-hmm. We invest for the long term. Matter of fact, when everyone's paying seven to six percent getting crushed, we have rates of 2.52, 2.74%. We are fixed people. We are not speculators. Mm-hmm. We look at data. Data does not lie. You have anywhere from five to eight million roofs that we're short of. Meaning that if everyone moves out of mom and dad's house and gets a place, we're millions of roofs short. That is a supply and demand issue. Right. So real estate in all levels, all asset classes, we own Section 8. We started with Section 8. Now we own Class 8. Matter of fact, now we're developing. We broke ground. We're finishing in a few months of CO, breaking ground another one in Central Florida, another one in Nashville. So real estate can change your life, but only... If you learn about real estate and forget about investing the dollars right now, mm-hmm. what you're cheating yourself from is your time. It cost, it, 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 people think it costs nothing your time. It's the most expensive thing, Omar. So why don't you learn more about real estate mm-hmm. and don't be so FOMO about investing in real estate. Invest your time. What would be the first three investments you recommend? Let's say a first time real estate investor makes. Say they're, you know, they're, you know, they start whether they're making 50 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand, 300 grand, you know, maybe earlier in their career, maybe even half a mil, a mil, two mil, right? As they scale up, what would be your guys' advice if you guys were starting now? How much liquid would you recommend people, you know, you say you stack and rack, how much you recommend people start stacking and racking? And what would you recommend their first one, two, three investments be having okay. be on this side of the I'll bed? take that for 30 seconds and I would like to hear Sophie yeah. chime in. In today's market, yeah. especially. This is very important, guys, what I'm going to represent. In real estate, this is probably the most important thing you're going to hear on this podcast. A lot of people are passive investors, meaning that they'll invest with another group. Mm -hmm. But most of them, if not all of them, don't realize that you have thousands of options, meaning that you're a group that looks for investors and partners. You're a group. I'm a group. We're all independently a group, and we're seeking investors. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing everyone just flock to the one that appears to doing good what they're driving what risk they're wearing how many doors they own flash dance. without understanding the investment theses meaning that does it align with my wants and the needs and desires of my legacy mm-hmm. and then this the negative thing about real estate it's it's illiquid mm-hmm. for a moment in time so when you plow and you put your money and you park your money with somebody make sure it's aligned with your wants, needs, and desires, because a lot of people criticize real estate because it's always been a bad experience for them. It's because they never learned about real estate. Mm -hmm. So you have a choice when you invest. Who are you gonna invest with? What are you gonna invest in? There is so many thousands, tens of thousands of options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, you know, you really have to sit down and say, if you're a newbie to real estate invest, a lot of people wanna get into real estate because they that people are making millions Mm -hmm. that like we speak a lot about our cash flow and that we live off this business but we did not live off this business at the beginning we had a business that was a cash cow that was bringing in that stack Mm -hmm. for us to then rack it into real estate so in newbies that are coming into don't think you're going to be able to live off your investments at the very beginning that does not exist i don't care who it is especially the ones that go into funds that go into being a passive investor. When you invest your money with somebody else that they're running the real estate, the cash flow does not come to you monthly, right. sometimes not even quarterly. Sometimes you get it annually. And if you're only investing a hundred thousand yeah. dollars, people think you're going to be receiving millions. You're going to probably receive $20, $50, $60. Right. A, a, a month that's all you're getting from that investment so you got to understand it we never went as a passive investor we always invested our own money mm-hmm. at the beginning we started very small guess what we couldn't live off that real estate investment so you're, you're investing in maybe single families barely covering the mortgage yeah. started single family and well what made it was holding it for three years and in three years we made that that value of the, the property Appreciate increased yeah. it. So we were able to cash out, now buy a bigger one. Mm-hmm. Now, but we couldn't live off of our portfolio the first, I don't know, oh my gosh. seven well, years. We couldn't yeah. live off the portfolio. So please understand that. Is it an, an amazing 
um, long-term career for you to be an investor in real estate and live off it a hundred percent don't and don't think that you're going to come into real estate and become a millionaire or have that cash so say stages what she just mentioned my wife said is very important guys look at the stage we're at we have 750 million dollars of a multifamily real estate portfolio how many doors that 2500 2500 give or take that have low leverage. We're very low leverage people because we want to make sure we weather all storms. Remember, we're in it for the long term. Now you see the stage, wow, they sold, they're, they're worth a half a billion dollars. They have this, they have 500,000 a month there. They have this, all oh, good for them and all that. Uh, don't make the mistake like Bobby used to make to get there quickly to accomplish what we got. Mm -hmm. Let me just give you the reality of that $750 million real estate portfolio. Many years ago, it started with one home, not a personal home, an investment home for rental. We went to 17 homes, one home at a time. We went to 17 once we started learning about real estate, when we made that mistake. And you would put 10% down or how were you guys? We would put, yeah, whatever the 20%, 10, whatever. Yeah, it was yeah. so many long, however it was to get the financing, but the correct type of financing, not to crush you. Yeah. Then after we, we scaled to 17 homes, one at a time, we then sold all 17 in three chunks to, a to, three, three, yeah. to yeah. three investors. Then what we did was we bought duplexes, one at a time, triplex. Anything that's four or under is considered residential, five or above is commercial. We started there, section eight, very tough neighborhoods. We did this for a long time. We did this for a number of years to get to the stage we're at now. Guys, it's so worth it. You want financial freedom. That's how you create financial freedom. Everyone thinks, my gosh, 10 years is such a long way. 10 Christmases. Yeah, you're 27 right. years old. By the time you're 37 years old, you can be financially free. Yeah, and real estate at the beginning, it's always like a part-time job, right? You need, you need something that's going to bring you in that cash flow to cover your bills and to give you enough to stack so that you could rack it into investments. Right. So if you do this for a few years later on, then you could convert completely into being a real estate Transition. investor. So you would right? recommend starting um, like with a triplex or a fourplex? Yeah, 100 percent. No, yeah, 1000 yeah. percent. No, the only reason we did it with We're one role, that's all we had. We that now, if I had, had a Bobby, I had a yeah. Sophie that's sharing from their heart with no motives, good intentions. I don't want to sell you a package. There's no motive. There's a, in the social media, everyone's selling something. If I had another Bobby or Sophie with a beautiful red candy, candy red heart, yes, I would start with a duplex, triplex. And I see a lot of people contact me on DM, all social media, yeah. and they have a job. They're, they have like, they're making like $150,000 a year, and they want to get right into real estate. And, and man, I try to respond to everyone. I'm, get, I'm getting more deeper in their question. Well, I only have $50,000 to invest in real estate. Well, that's not enough unless you want to invest with others. And if you do, make sure they're aligned with your wants, needs, and desires, your investment theses. I say, by the way, what do you do? Oh, I sell here, here. What, what, what day, when do you start down around maybe nine o'clock and I'm pretty much done about four o'clock. I'm banging, I'm crushing it, Bobby. What are you doing after four o'clock? See, the ones that don't want to get a second job, they don't understand the power of that penny compound. I'm begging you to look up. I understood the power of that second job, what it can do. It's stacking and racking. You're going to sit there and just play video games. You're going to sit there and just talk about blah, 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 and all that. There's, that is a true test of how much you want it. Mm -hmm. Think about what I just represented. So many young people, even older people, have one job. Well, I got kids. I got that. Well, you're not communicating with your partner. How are you managing your time? How is it organized? How are you going to run a company? You can't run it under your own roof. Yeah, and thinking, I love that you say thinking about it long term. I remember when we interviewed... Uh... I interviewed, uh, I had the pleasure of interviewing John Paul DeJoria, founder wow. of Paul Mitchell Champagne. Yeah, wow. Film yeah. Tequila. He had just exited uh, Patron for $5.1 billion, sold it to Bacardi. And I asked him, you know, what's the difference, you know, over the years? Because this guy was homeless at 37, built not one, but two multi-billion dollar companies. And he said, Omar, you know, the one thing I notice about wealth is that the wealthiest people in the world think in terms of decades, two or three decades. He goes, and if you think about people that make a billion dollars, they think in terms of maybe a decade or two. When you think about people that make hundreds of millions, they think in terms of a decade. And you think of people who make tens of millions, they think a couple of years. When you think about people that make a mil, two, three mil, they think in terms of a year. When you think of people that make six figures, they focus on the month. 
and the lowest paid people in the world focus on the hour, right? So it's the time horizon with which you evaluate decisions. The lowest paid people in the world are focused on how much they make per hour. Longest term thinkers in the world focus on how much over a decade, two decades, three decades. So I love that you're talking about Great. long term. Omar, yeah. <clears throat> there was a, about eight months ago, give or take, true story at this house. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving my garage to, to go out. And as you know me, I value my minutes. So I want to get as much in there. His Amazon truck is pulled up in front of the garage so I can't get out. And he's there doing some paperwork or looking for the package, whatever. Finally, I just get out of the darn door saying, I'm going to go get the package. Yeah. I'm walking towards him. Now he's walking towards me with the package. Cool dude, Spanish dude. Gets me the package. I'm about to walk away. He goes, hey, Mono. Hey, how do I get a house like this? Mm -hmm. And I exactly said this. Invest in real estate for the long term. His response in a Spanish accent. Now? No one's think, No one's listening to what someone's telling them. Now? Invest in real estate for the long term, meaning that if you buy real estate, make sure it's not speculated like a lot of wholesalers are doing. Wholesalers are now going through a little crisis. A big crisis. He yeah. tells me, now? He's looking for the, he's looking for the Dr. Feel Good right now. He wants to buy this house next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Real estate's long term. So when you think about it, direct, and people think about it in 10 year, 20 year, 15 year type of mindset. 10 years, man. We sold that company for a billion dollars. You know when it burped out of a, a billion? 20 years, nearly 18 years. Took us 18 years. No, really more because the other. Oh, yeah, before that. Before that. Years. That capital they always that. want to measure where you're at now and try to get there quick. They don't realize, I always say stage by stage. If you're at a stage, I am broke. I am battling with little drugs. I got a little issues here. I'm a little all over the place. Win here then. Fix all that, confront all that elephant, fix there, hit that ceiling. Make sure you look back, making sure you, you, you got everything off the floor. You fix it all before you pivot. All of us want to just pivot and forget about all this Donkey Kong. Yeah. You got to address that Donkey Kong. Yeah. And I remember you gave me that advice is maximize what's behind you instead of looking at the next thing and the next thing. Absolutely. I love that. All right. And then as we wrap up, I know we're coming on time here. You know, if you guys could look back to the young Sophia and Bobby Castro, maybe look in the camera, people listening around the world, whether they're listening or watching, whatever stage of life or their business they're in, what advice would you give to the younger version of Bobby or Sophia that's maybe looking for answers, looking to get to that next level, looking to create financial freedom, and maybe has a fear that, ah, is my time coming? Is it really going to happen? Maybe they're overwhelmed or intimidated. Maybe the same way you guys were by real estate, right? They hear about hundreds of millions of dollars of real estate, but, you know, they maybe saved their first chunk of cash and they, it yeah. seems impossible. So to that human you. listening, what advice would you give to somebody on the other end of this that, that wants that life? Bobby or Sophie, I'm talking right at you. I love you, man. I'm here for a reason talking to you. You're listening to me for a reason. I'm somebody that didn't get, I failed at the third grade. Didn't get through the ninth grade. I come, with a, I come from a lot of challenges. You are a mess unless you focus yourself to understand how powerful and how special you are. Do you realize you're one out of eight billion? You're, there's only one of you. Give yourself some time. Cut out some people from your life for a moment in time. They could be family members. Unless you spend time with yourself, you're really never gonna find you. You are the magic. It's not this one, it's not that opportunity, it's not that mastermind, it's not this. You're putting yourself under unnecessary pressure. I love you, man. I have no motives. I don't want to sell you nothing. I just want you to win. Grab my book. DM me. I'll send it to you for free, man. Find yourself. When you find yourself, only one thing will happen. Clarity will come in your life, and you will focus on what really matters. Yeah, and for me, I would tell you to really be have core values. Understand what you want. Have a huge goal knowing that you need to have stepping stones to get to them and understanding what you really want and letting the outside noise block it out. Because if it wasn't that we blocked out the noise from the outer, we would have never been able to reach the goal that we had. But we had such focused core values and understood what we wanted out of our life, what we wanted to have and 
leave as a legacy, create that generational wealth for our generations to come, that we were, Bobby calls it laser focus attacking. Um, so make sure that you understand what you want, what your core values are. Write yourself a mission statement of what you want to see in your family and your legacy and really focus that goal, that end goal with those little stepping stones is going to really make you get where you want. It's what helped us. And, you know, I have, there's four pillars that really helped Bobby and I. One is PMA all day, every day. Positive and that's attitude. Pos positive mental attitude. Non-refundable minutes, not allowing anyone to steal anything, any minutes from your life. Number three was stack and rack. And number four was at yeah. hacking. Mm -hmm. And those four pillars was really how we were able to accomplish this empire that we've built. And remember, they're not stealing your minute. You're choosing to give it. I love that. Well, thank you guys so much for coming to the show. It's a pleasure. We got to do this again sometime soon. As always, guys, thank you for tuning in. Make sure to follow Bobby and Sophia, as well as check out the Upsiders book. We'll put a link in the description down below. Thank you. Until next time, live strong, live with passion, and go chase those dreams thinking long term. God bless, and we'll see you guys in the next inspiring episode.